what are the benefits and what is Tasbihat al-Zahra? Well, it seems that from the narrations, the Lady of Light is looking for someone to help her in the house. And that Rasulullah replies to her, I'll give you something which is greater. Something which is more beneficial to you than any helper who will be with you at home. And that is for you to 34 times say, Allahu Akbar. And 33 times say, Subhanallah. And 33 times say, Alhamdulillah. And that whoever recites the Subhanallah, the plethora of traditions, mm -hmm. which talk about the merits of the Tasbih of Fatwa al Zahra, Salawatullah wa Salamu alayha. One particular narration, I can go on and on about the narrations, but one particular narration which always struck me is that whoever finishes their salah and straight away begins with the rosary bead, the recital of the dhikr of the tasbih of Fatwa al Zahra, alayhi salam, Allah will not allow them to touch the fire of hell. The fire of hell will never touch them. Sometimes when we finish our salah, Wallah, my dear brothers and sisters, all it takes is just to stay on the prayer mat one or two minutes extra. It makes a whole difference to your day, mm -hmm. your year, your life. And your hereafter. And your hereafter, of course. In your day, you've mentioned 33 times, Alhamdulillah. Alhamd is a form of thanking Allah, is a form of praising Allah. Mm -hmm. And if Imam Sadiq says, if you want blessings to continue and remain in your life, always say Alhamdulillah. Secondly, at the same time, don't just go Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. I've, I've seen people, honestly, and I've been there. It just sounds like I've a been there. monotone word. No, no, you hear them straight after Salah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Spas, 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 <laughs> you don't think you want it. What's this person saying? No, no. Subhanallah, say it. Even you know in Salah, mm -hmm. when you recite Qul Hu Allah, Surah Al Ikhlas, mm -hmm. after Surah Al Fatiha, you know you can't say it in one breath. Mm -hmm. You have to cut it. Cut it, break it. No, no. Qul Hu Allah, speak to Allah properly. Likewise, when he says, what spa? What which spa <laughs> are you referring to? You know? Subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. And say it with full meaning. It's like in Laylatul Qadr when you see people and they're doing the tasbih. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. No, no. Say it to Allah like you mean it. Astaghfirullah, Rabbi wa atu. So the other benefit is that you say it in a way where you really are communicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the, the history of it. In Ahlul Bayt, Imam al Sadiq has unbelievable number of traditions about how this salah is greater than this many rak'ahs, and this salah is greater than this, uh, this tasbih is greater than this salah, than uh, this many salahs, and this many rak'ahs. There's many traditions out there. <laughs>